Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you very much for uh, finding the time to uh, talk to me. I had the chance to uh, watch Pleasure yesterday, and it was it was really quite impactful. And the the music is a huge part of that. So um, I wanted to start off in saying that. Thank you. Uh, before we. <laughs> Before we before we get into pleasure in particular, uh, what is what is what is for people who may not be aware, uh, what are what is your uh, history as far as being a film composer? Uh, okay, so I started composing for film about twelve years ago. I mostly done Swedish and Scandinavian productions. I've done two. Um, American independent films, uh, Wild Nights with Emily by Madeleine Olnick and, um, uh, and uh, Human Affairs by Charlie Burns. Um, um, but apart from that, it's been mostly Scandinavian um, Nordic films and TV series. I've been working together with my brother, Padre, and we have a studio together called Freedom Fit, and um, we scored about 25 films. Um, TV series and um, and this is actually like the first film that I scored uh, all by myself in a sense. I mean, I normally work together with him, um, and it was a great great adventure. <laughs> what what is what is it that um, what was it that inspired you to want to write music to film? Um, I think I've always loved film, and I've always loved music, and I think. No, I realized that I realized that connection quite early with you know ET, and then later on like you know, to continue with Spielberg and uh, uh, or, or uh, John Williams, uh, Jaws, um, and yeah, I mean great themes. And I, the more I, the more I played music, the more I studied music, I also became more aware of this, and you know, um, and so I actually took. I mean, at my at my last year at um, because I, I didn't, I didn't really study composition, uh, like composing. Um, uh, I was studying. I, my major was trombone, and I was studying first classical at the Royal College of Music in London, and then I went to Havana for three years and studied Cuban music, and then I was, in, I was at the Royal College of Music in Stockholm at the jazz program. But my final year there, I started, like, like two final years, I started to take a lot of extracurricular curricular classes and. Um, in arranging, composing, and string arrangements, and everything, and, and one of the, these courses were film music because I thought that some like really fun, and mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and and, and and yeah, it was really fun, and, um, and but but then straight after college, you know, I just started touring with a lot of different groups and artists and writing arrangements and and, and writing for different you know groups. Um, and, um, and so it wasn't until a couple of years later when, when uh, me and my brother decided to uh, team up uh, because he would, he's a classical composer and trained, at, trained at, um, in, in, in Gothenburg in southern Sweden and also in Paris at the, at the Conservatoire there. Um, and we just realized that we complemented each other and we were like, yeah, so where can we take this? Where, I mean, for what purpose can we create music? And we were both really interested in, interested in starting composing for film. And so, so we got like first, you know, small assignments, like writing some children's TV stuff. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we got to know more people and we started to take on bigger projects. And um, yeah, and, but, but I, I mean, I always found that, you know, that collaboration, but, picture and, mm -hmm. and sound as something really inspiring and yeah. uh, and there, there's so so much you can do I mean I think I think there is a you know common you know picture of film music as being only like John Williams or that kind I mean that kind of classical film score or Marvel score or whatever mm -hmm. uh, Hans Zimmer but th there's so many things you can do musically and you know and especially when you really collaborate with sound and, and and picture and that that i mean that creative process is really fun yeah and i that's that's a that's a great segue into uh pleasure which very much does not sound like the 
traditional classical score, but there are certainly classical elements in the score. And yeah. I, I think the... And one of the things that struck me right off the bat... Uh, well, first of all, how did you... How, how did you get involved with uh, Pleasure as composer? Uh, yeah, I, I knew Ninja, uh, the, the director, just, you know, um, briefly uh, from before, but, but the, I, I've worked with the producers before, and uh, they contacted me and my brother, actually, like pretty late in the process. I think it was maybe a month, a month and a half away from final cut in the editing process. Um, and... Uh, they were looking for, for. I mean, I think they they or Ninja wasn't really. She knew she wanted like an epic score. She wanted uh, the music to be sort of like a statement in itself, mm-hmm. and it was really important for her that you know the the the, the score was was not judgmental or pointing fingers or, and also not being too generic in a sense. Um, but it, it so. Um, yeah, so they contacted us, and unfortunately, my brother at the time he was knee deep in a in a in a in, in a project. He was uh, um, uh, writing a, a symphony orchestra piece on a commission. So it was just like colliding schedules, and I was like, yeah, but you know, after watching the film, I saw a raw cut, and I was just blown away, and I was just like, yeah, I really want to do this, and so so we decided I, I would do it myself. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry, did I answer your question or not? <laughs> no, that, that's 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 uh, yeah. a uh, that's that's a great answer to that question. Um, the the sound of this is very the the sound of this is very unique because it is on the one hand it has a choral element that is kind of operatic but also very it, it's very much in keeping with a classical idea of solo vocalists but at the bottom of this you also have this hip-hop beat and this hip-hop style that is basically going through it and the the duality of that in this story is very interesting i think because of the fact that the film is essentially about the the main character satisfying both her her personal pleasures as well as base human desires. And I think the the music really plays to that duality quite well. Yeah, uh, thanks. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't a given fr- from the start. I mean, we, we Ninja had some ideas about cello or like, she, she, she was really after finding kind of the, the inner voice of Bella. And, um, and we were talking a lot about, you know, the sounds of the female body or like, you know, like moaning or breathing or, Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 um, from there, I, I, so the first, so the first I did was kind of generic (laughs) cello music. And she was like, no, this is not it. And I was like, okay, so let's grab that and and start it over. And, and, um, we talked about a bit Hildegard von Bingen, which is, uh, this, um, and composer in the 13th century, maybe I'm not, but a long time ago, writing these kind of Gregorian chants for non choirs uh, or female choirs, uh, and uh, and that was that was interesting. And we were thinking, how could we do something like that? And then I also felt that I wanted I wanted the sense of a, a solo, a solo vocal, not only choir, and and so I am. Um, I called uh, Carolyn, who's who's the uh, opera soprano, and uh, and I worked with her bef- her before, and I knew it would be like really. She's really easy to work with, and she can improvise. I can just sing stuff to her, and she will just follow my, my lead. And so I need to prepare, you know, sheet music, and so I quite, you know, uh, quite quickly developed. I mean, got some sketches together, and. Uh, the other thing Nina had been talking about was the hip hop as an element, sort of, kind of, to represent uh, the the badassness of these uh, 
female talents and the friends of Bella and like how they how they view themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, this is pretty clear that they don't really view themselves as victims or or anything, or like rather that I, they're in control. They're like they're in charge and they know what they're doing and they have set their boundaries, even though it may, may not appear so. Um, so we had those two elements and we were talking a lot about the harlot versus the Madonna um, and, and, and how would that sound? And mm. so when I started sketching with this opera, I, had, I also had an idea of the opera being more dramatic as opera. And so my first sketches were really quite dramatic <laughs> and that didn't really work. I mean, the, the, only, the only character that worked on was uh, the Ava character, sort of to get that more of uh, the diva and, you know, that sense of how, how, uh, how uh, Bella perceives her, uh, uh, her perception of, of Ava. And, and um, but otherwise we found this, um, this kind of sacred choral, really simple themes, but in layers. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, so I did that and I had a couple of pieces and I'm like, okay, so what would happen if, if I just, you know, threw a hip hop beat? On top of this, like a trap beat, and I so I did really simple beats to, to begin with. Um, later on, I got uh, help from our studio assistant Ludwig, who's ten years younger than me, so he's in the game <laughs> uh, uh, with that. But but uh, but but yeah, and, and when I played that to Nina, we as you said, like yeah, this is it. This is the duality. This is so we really found felt that we found something quite early. Um, in the process what are were there any were there any challenges once you hit upon the the particular sound because it is so specific were, yeah. were there any particular challenges that you found when it came to going from scene to scene scoring the scoring the picture yeah i mean there were a lot of different challenges um because, um, I mean, the film has so many layers mm -hmm. uh, and it also has so many different storytelling techniques, you know, in a sense, like um, one moment we are like, you know, very much the, the POV of Bella and then the next time we're somewhere else and sometimes it's really, you know, almost documentary-like and then it's like drama and then it's mm -hmm. social realism and then it's, uh, you know, elevated scenes, almost like music videos. Uh, um, and so, yeah, of course, that was, that was um, but I think, I think the biggest challenge was like, to, I mean, and, and that, that was like what was more, most important was to always stay with Bella in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, we were always with Bella and not with anyone else. Um, and uh, um, yeah, but, but I, I think also it's always like that when you're composing a score and, and, and what maybe the hardest i mean because i i'm always trying to strive and together with my brother we're always trying to strive to, to you know to find you know this specific universe like what's mm -hmm. the universe of this film uh and that's more important than what kind of music it is it's just like we, you have to sense it i mean whatever music will fit to that universe and we've tried to build around that and so once you find kind of the components and you know that like so we want this we want this then you can also say we don't want this we so we can shut some windows and th then you have some materials to work with um but then of course it's like it's always a matter of balance and uh, at some point you know this really sacred innocent vocals didn't work as well and we had i mean i had to develop that in, in another in another direction but uh sorry did i answer your question <laughs> oh yeah yeah very much so yeah. and uh because of the fact that i mean you know as it's it's one of those things where it's i i think finding that voice for the film is 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 the hardest part and then when you find that voice well how is this going to work from scene to scene and yeah yeah I it's it's just such it and 
is it going to work from scene to scene is the most important part. And I, I think yeah. one of the things that because of the nature of this film, because of the nature of the story, I I think this this is is to a certain extent it does feel kind of it, it feels very unconventional, certainly. I mean it's not a traditional orchestral score. But at the same time, it, it makes all the sense in the world when you're listening to it in the context of the film that yeah. this is how it is. Mm. Uh, yeah, and that, I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, uh, but I mean, uh, yeah, um, uh, I was going to bounce back uh, with something here, but I lost it. So please, did you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but... No, but but to I mean, I, I think that's always the challenge, as you said, like finding the voice for the film. Uh, once you have the components, that's also and th then it also becomes a bit of music editing because you find these different themes, and so mm -hmm. you, you you know that okay, so I want to reconnect with this later on, and I want like and and you start laying a kind of a puzzle like with the with the music you have and. And then certain scenes you definitely have to compose, you know, from scratch yeah. till the end because there are like key scenes in that sense. And 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 then you have to use these components in a way like, okay, where can I? How can I use the 808 bass? Um, what should the core like? What kind of vocals should it be here? What what kind of lyrics? And and the, I I mean there. I mean, I was. I mean, it was a great collaboration with Ninja. We 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 had so many lengthy discussions uh, about more or less every scene, and she really knew what story she wanted to tell. She yeah. really knew all these different layers, and for me, I would just had to sort of interpret that into music and find a way of doing that, like with these components. And yeah, and it's um, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, and uh, you know, finding. Finding the the musical theme is is one of the hardest parts about this. I mean, especially because of how much different action there is in the film. Uh, how much of how much of Bella's voice do you want to bring out in the vocals? Uh, how much of the bass do you want to emphasize in some of these moments? No. And it's it's really it's really quite striking how. How how successful it is. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I mean that that was also, and and I, I I wanted to find also elements so you can like, I mean so so I worked a lot with um, with Carolyn, um, Rick, and I did like a lot of recordings and I you know almost I sung her melodies and. Um, we elaborated with, with lyrics, and I mean, we used Latin uh, for the most part, except for the the Bella and Joy theme, Una Gioia Sempre Viva, which is actually like an old Italian poem about friendship, uh, which really worked well in the operatic mm -hmm. sense. And and there, I really wanted to make this kind of have this really warm feeling um, and um, make this uh, waltz. So it's like and and. But but what I did also with with uh, both Carolyn and and Bella was that I uh, I sorry I'm just checking uh, yeah my AirPods are running out of battery I I've been in a phone line for two and a half hours because <laughs> my flight was cancelled uh, <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> thank you Finn Air uh, but. Um, <laughs> So uh, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah. So I did what I did also was I did uh, I made my own instruments with both uh, the voice of Car Carolyn, like with different recordings, but also with the ADR of um, Sophia Kappel, who plays. Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, you were you were talking about uh, using using like different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So, so I did these. Um, Almost like you know, voice synthesizers with the help of um, of uh, of um, yeah, like um, with with these voices, and also I, I used the ADR of 
uh, Sophia Capital plays Bella when she's like moaning and I did the, these like moan beats. I don't know if you've heard them mm. in the, it's on the pleasure, like the intro it's some, yeah. and the, it's also in this hard to decor. And, and, and I used it also in this die scene, which is, which was a really um, a special scene to compose for, like, because there were so many layers to that scene as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but, but, but once I found that element as well to go with the other, it, it became sort of a way of blending, you know, this classical world with a more modern world without, you know, modern sound without leaving, you know, without leaving that texture of voice. Yeah. Which, no. If it, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And uh, it, it, it just is, it's so successful within the movie. And one of the things that is interesting is because of the fact that, you know, film, Film music is always so specifically tied to another medium, which is film. But yeah. one of the things that was, is really interesting and special is when you're able to listen to it separated from the film and still feel like you're getting a full experience. And that's, and I think that's one of the other things that's so striking about this is because of the fact that you feel like you're still having the story told to you out of the context separate from the film and because of the fact that so much of this is derived is basically songs and it they're basically songs as much as they are uh score yeah yeah i mean i i, I tend to I tend to compose a lot like that, and 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 as well. I, mean, I I think I have it's because I have this jazz background. I used to play a, a lot of you know grunge music, <laughs> writing grunge songs in my youth, and uh, I've always had uh, I, I I'm I've always been making songs, you know, and um, and I think I tend to compose in that sense. Sometimes I find themes, and then I try you know to develop them into pieces. And even though it's film music, and, and I've always worked like that with my brother as well and so um i mean we did we did a tv series two years ago that was set in the 80s and so we just go right in, through into you know the, the the wonderful world of 80s synthesizers <laughs> and you know electric drums and 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 uh, and also i mean yeah all, all that you know what's what, what's special about the 80s and at first i mean when we did it first the, the project before that was like, you know, a symphony orchestra with a large choir and we recorded in Budapest and it was like really kind of dramatic thriller score. Uh, and then we went from that to this, you know, glossy, happy, naive 80s. And, but, 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 but uh, what, what were, like really happened and that op often tend to happen uh, is that all of these different themes or pieces tend to develop into songs. And so we did that for, for that, for that TV series. We did, I mean, the, we did a, an album and we, we made up artists uh, <laughs> and constellations. And, every, and so every, like almost every piece of the score that in itself could be only, you know, a synthesizer playing on something was like developing into, into songs. And I think I, I, the same thing happened here, whether or whether or not my, by mistake, but th th yeah, it yeah. happened. <laughs> Uh, well, my, my last question, and thank you very much for your time today, is what do you have you. coming up next? Uh, yeah, um, I can't tell you about everything, but I have some exciting stuff in the pipeline. Uh, uh, but right now, me and my brother are working on a film called Amina, which is about uh, uh, a single mom who is also achieving to be an MMA fighter and uh, that kind of clash between motherhood and, um, I mean, if, if it would have been a man, no one would have flinched if mm -hmm. he just, you know, left this kid and went yeah. on to pursue his dreams. But yeah, that, this is another. So yeah, we're working on that. And uh, then we're hoping to do an animated score. Uh, and I'm really, I would read, I mean, it's been one of my dreams for a long time to, to write uh, apropos songs, you know, the, the, you know, write kind of these almost musical Disney-like songs <laughs> to go with the score. And the, 
I find great pleasure in that. So, um, so I hope to be do that, uh, to be doing that, you know. And then, as I said, some other projects, but I can't really talk about them right now. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. I just have to ask you quickly: Is that a trombone in the background? It is. Are you a trombone I, player? I was. I was. I I played trombone as well. I I don't really play too much anymore. Um, no. <laughs> But yeah, I I also uh, I also compose music, and I'm actually okay, working on nice. I'm actually working on a film score myself. So oh um, nice yeah, it, it was I just had another uh, meeting over Zoom with the director, and it's it's been a really fun process. Uh, so yeah. yeah, I yeah, but yeah, when you said trombone, it's like oh hey, another trombone yeah. right? <laughs> um, yeah, it is. But yeah, no, I, I, I saw it, it was sticking, it was right yeah. behind your shoulder there. And, yeah. But no, it was really, yeah. it was really nice to talk to you. I'm glad we were able to. Uh, Likewise, yeah. Hope to meet you in person someday. Uh, yeah. We'll, 